Hi everyone and welcome back to our series Tips from the Experts where we dive deep into the journeys of professionals who have made a significant impact in the business analysis field sharing their experiences, their challenges and the wisdom that they've gathered along the way to help and guide those who are following in their footsteps. So today we're incredibly fortunate to have with us Thando Jacobs, a seasoned business analyst whose journey into the BA world is nothing short of inspiring. So without further ado, let's welcome Thando to, to the channel. Thando, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, people. What an intro. And I'm honored <laughs> to be on your platform. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm so happy that you're, you're joining us today to share your knowledge in business analysis. And I'm sure the viewers are very excited to, to watch this and get some tips yeah <laughs> okay so before we dive into the questions that i have um could you please give us a brief introduction about yourself and inside business analysis i'm tanner jacobs good to meet you everyone i'm a citizen business analyst um i came into the ba world in 2019 and i've been in the ba space since then my, my career can be summed up really in financial services and higher education as a business analyst and I've been enjoying it ever since I made the switch, a transition from a sales background. And I'm currently the host of the Inside Business Analysis podcast, which is a podcast where I have similar conversations with other people who are in the BA space um, around everything business analysis. And we want to get inside what really happens behind the closed doors of business analysis. Mm. And so that's what that podcast is about. And I'm excited to be, be, be here with you people. Guys. Link in description box to listen to and watch Thando's podcast, Inside Business Analysis. Yeah, so... We did our conversation back in January, right? So uh, yes, we did. check that one out as well. Yes, we had one with me on Thando's podcast as well. Um, okay, so Thando, can you tell us how you became a business analyst? Sure. So as I said, I was working in sales before and one of my clients, uh, I was working as a, uh, as a um, I guess, account manager, relationship manager type of job in banking. So one okay. of my clients was a business analyst and she randomly just said to me you'd make a good business analyst and I was like okay but why would you say that what is it what do you do and she started to explain to me the transferable skills that she could see mm. that I had that would work in her field and and really that's where for me my eyes were opened into what a business analysis even is mm -hmm. because every time I hear people working in tech you know you immediately think of all the technical jobs you know, yes. engineers, developers, testers, um, and, and of things of that nature. And so when I found out about the BA world, I was just like, oh my goodness, this sounds really cool. And this sounds like something I'd love to do. You know, one of the reasons that it appealed to me as well was because I had a business management degree. Mm. And in my degree, I'd learned about like, we didn't call it requirements solicitation techniques in the degree, but that's effectively what we did. Um, I remember even doing my dissertation, I was doing uh, focus groups and I was doing like questionnaires and surveys and analyzing mm. the data and presenting my findings and doing recommendations. So, you know, I was like, yeah, this is literally sounds like the kind of thing I'd love to do. And mm. in that space, when that, when, when that uh, client of mine told me about it, I effectively started the journey of learning about business analysis because I knew nothing about projects, I knew nothing about tech, I knew nothing about business analysis. And I started to learn about the fun, the foundational, I guess, basics of what a business analysis is, what mm -hmm. a business analyst does, and all that language that uh, kind of around tech, how projects are done, and, and then everything, you know, waterfall versus agile, project versus product, da 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 da, -da going through all of that stuff. And uh, the more I learned, the more, I, you know, the, the hunger in me started to grow. <laughs> and long story short, and I, it was a long journey, you know, I'm talking wow. about between a year and a year and a half of me doing learnings and looking for my first BA job. I eventually learned my first uh, BA job and um, yeah, haven't looked back since. Wow, it seems like you, you took a lot of time to really, really understand what it is that we need to become BAs. Um, and it's quite interesting also that a lot of non-BAs already have those skills, those transferable skills and knowledge. Uh, it's just 
then going on to learn the key terms, uh, project, methodologies, all those various um, instances in business analysis that then sort of solidifies the BA knowledge, which is what you did, really. Exactly. And, and I think I think more people, if they looked back, they will, re- they will realize that they have probably done some form of business mm-hmm. analysis activities, mm-hmm. even though they may not have had the job title business analyst, yeah. even though they may have not called them requirements. Mm. Even though they may not have called it a business case or an options paper, um, even though they may not necessarily have called it, say, an acceptance criteria, they yes. would have done something along the lines of just ensuring that the thing that's being delivered is fit mm. for purpose and it delivering value to the, the end user, the client, the business, etc. And so I think, you know, don't get me wrong, it it is a steep learning curve. There is a lot mm. to learn, um, but... There is a lot of transferable skills in that sense that for most people is then actually understanding, yeah, I've done that in a different context. Now I just need to kind of reframe my experience to kind of speak the language of business analysis to show that I can't I have done it before, albeit it wasn't quite under the umbrella of business analyst job title. Yes. The language of business analysis, that's a key one. <laughs> it that's is. A key one. And in your journey into exploring the language of business analysis did you find anything daunting like when it comes to the tech side like for me when i first heard about business analysis i initially wasn't interested because i was like i don't have any it experience i'm not interested in it things tech things programming and coding because prior to doing my degree in psychology i started um in it a degree in IT but I didn't enjoy it it was like oh my god this is not the right one for me and then I switched to psychology right um so I just had that in my head business analysis nope it's not for me um so did you have that sort of feeling as well when it came to um a lot of business analysts being in the IT space and feeling that you have to know tech things (laughs) I'll be honest, uh, Pippa. I it didn't scare me. Let me say that. Okay. It didn't scare me. Not <laughs> yeah. that I not that I like wanted it, mm-hmm. but it didn't scare me. And okay. for me, that was part of the excitement. Actually, it was part of the wow. excitement to say, yeah, to, like I'd love to learn more about technology. I'd love to learn more about um, how t- the technology behind things work, and you know how systems uh, kind of work together, and all the rest of it. And and that's how, that's for me to be honest with you. I'll probably say that's mm-hmm. been the one thing that's helped me even in my career to propel. Um, and you know, we might talk about that later. But mm-hmm. that 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 interest in tech for me yeah. has always been there. I I think I never realized it until I was in that position. I was like, oh, this I'd love to learn more about that actually. Um mm-hmm. I think the thing for me simply was that I just knew that to go down the technical route wouldn't make sense because I'd have to or I'll be competing with people who have four year degrees in computer yes. science, for example. So that's for me I already knew that there's no point in me going down that road because I'd I'd be at least at the time you know this is going back before I knew about boot camps and all the rest of it. But mm-hmm. I was just like at the time I'm not I'm not going to be able to stand out in a market where other people have an actual degree in software engineering and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think that's what for me kind of made me not want to go down the tech route. But okay. no, I wasn't scared of the tech. It was <laughs> it, it was something that actually made me even more interested in doing it. Yeah, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Where, whereas for me, I was scared of the tech and I was more interested in the people side, coming from a psychology background as well. You speak about doing a um, a tech degree. So I remember actually that for my A-levels, I did maths, mm-hmm. business and IT. And I remember I was at a point where I was about to pick my degree and IT was going to be one of them. But somehow right. I ended up choosing business management. I can't remember what swayed my decision. <laughs> um, but yeah, here we are. Very interesting. So would you say that you're more of a tech BA than a purist BA? I don't even know myself. Know. I, I'm not going to lie. I don't <laughs> even know. I, I would probably say I'm somewhere in the middle, but as to okay. which side I lean more towards, I probably say at the moment, I'm, I'm still more on the business side, to be honest yeah. with you, um, because I, I, I don't have a, a deep enough technical knowledge and ability to then say I'm a pure technical BA. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I, you know, that's an interesting question because when I was looking into this, um, 
and I was asking other people about what are the differences really because whether mm. you're a technical BA or a traditional BA mm -hmm. uh, you're still fundamentally a business analyst so what are the differences and um, from the conversations that I had people are saying that a traditional business analyst is somebody who is more focused on kind of the business and the user requirements side of things yes. processes um, things of that nature right you're looking more on the business and then a technical business analyst is then maybe more looking at things like the data between systems systems mm. integrations and um the the kind of the 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 technical flow that sits underneath the business process so yes. things like use cases for instance um and i think i'm a bit of both because i love both sides so that's interesting <laughs> that's interesting because i'm the opposite <laughs> i'm more on the business side the business side the strategic um business analysis um user stories, processes. Um, I dabble into the tech side sometimes, depending on the project I'm working on, but I still find that I prefer the so business side of things. So you would want to do a, um, a data model or a uh, UML activity nope. diagram or something like that? I'd be like, nah, that's cool. Nah, that's not me. <laughs> love things like that. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I, I really do love doing like data model, data dictionaries, mm. um, looking at entity relationship diagrams, yes. use cases, being like, okay, the system does this, then the user does oh, this, goodness. but the system does that. Like going that back and forth. I, I just, yeah, I feel like, I, I think for me, part of the, part of it is that I, I just love to see the complete picture so mm, if yeah, i know what the good. business process is it's like great but i really want to know the system process behind the business process mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. i also want to know uh the data flow between the systems within the business process i'm, I'm that kind of i guess person yeah. um which which works which which sometimes doesn't work to my favor because i then like to get into into the detail where sometimes I just need to keep yes. it high level. So yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really, really interesting. Very interesting. Moving on to the next question. Um, what would you say that new business analysts uh, should prepare for now that we've kind of touched on Purist BA, tech BA, uh, it kind of raises a lot more into that business analysis area, right? But as newbie business analysts or transitioning business analysts what would you say that they should sort of expect for uh, i'm not sure how to structure this question for the first day or prior to starting their role in business analysis so a a a new business analyst or somebody who's an aspiring business analyst yes. who's yes, yet to aspiring. kind of have a fully fledged ba role or maybe even yet to start their first mm -hmm. job they got an offer or they, you know, it's your first week in the role because you're still in that newbie stage, right? Mm -hmm. What should they expect? I can only speak about my experience. So yes, I'm going to say to you, expect to be flooded with imposter syndrome. Mm. Expect to be completely lost. Expect to not know what the hell you're doing anymore, you know, yeah. because the training taught you one thing and the real world looks a little bit different. Um, And expect to just be a bit like, okay, uh, I really need a mentor or a coach or somebody to just hold my hand a little bit here. I think, and that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's I wish okay. somebody would have told me that because the, the mistake I made people when I started my first job was I was, and, and, I, and, I don't, and I don't know if this is because of my sales background or if everybody would understand this, but I wanted to kind of prove my worth, right? And so I started my first job literally within the first like month. Mm -hmm. Like I was trying to like change processes. I was trying to be like, let's introduce this new solution. I was trying to like right. be like, let's do this and let's do this, let's do this. But then another BA turned around to me and said, mate, you, you need to slow down. Like you need to just spend time understanding just the as is, understand the problem, yes. understand the current situation. But then he then said something powerful to me. He then said, because even the business leaders and stakeholders, even they don't know what the problems mm. are. So you're you're on the journey with them to try and help them see. They may have worked here for years, but even they don't really know why we do this process this way or why there's a disjoint between like marketing and sales. They don't they don't mm. have a clue. And so you're the one that's been brought in to analyze that. And I think that freed me a lot. Um, so that's what I would say. 
And the reason why I say that is then because everything else, like, you know, how do you do a process model? How do you write requirements? What documentation should you use? Should I use Trello or Jira or da, 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 da. like Mm all -hmm. of that stuff would just fall in place, like, honestly. And, and part of it is also determined by the organization you work for. Yeah. So you don't have too much power in some of these things. But what you what what will happen for sure is those kind of thoughts and feelings and fear and all of that stuff, anxiety kind of coming to you because it is a job that nobody, nobody like holds your hand too much. Do you know what I mean? Like you're thrown into a project and you're almost expected to know how to handle yourself Mm -hmm. as Yeah. a business analyst. No one says to you, right, today you have to do an as-is process flow for this and then tomorrow you have to do um, a stakeholder engagement with this group of stakeholders and then on Wednesday you then have to set up a work. Like nobody does that. You Mm have -hmm. to like figure this out yourself and so that's what you should expect. Yes, that's that's really good. That's really good. So what would you say if the person joins midway into the project, into the journey? Will they still need to do the as is, understand the as is, follow the same path or is there a different approach do you think? I guess my my so my approach when 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 kind of starting a, a new job Yep. and slash new project, I think you the pace just maybe is faster if it's an existing project. But effectively, it's understanding at the top level what is it that that we're trying to accomplish. Why Yeah. is this even a project? Why is it that why is this the thing that we're doing as a business? And then following on from that, I guess you could lump out everything I'm about to say as understanding the as is, in Yes. a way. So understand what the vision is, understand what it is that we're trying to accomplish and achieve, understand who your main stakeholders are and, you know, who you're going to be working with closely and on the project, Mm. understand even what your role is or your expect, your expect, your, sorry, what stakeholders expect from you in Hmm. this role and in this project. What is it that's on your lap to you know, to do and to deliver. Yeah. And then understand what's been done in the past, what's happening right now and what will come in the future uh, as the project progresses. And I think a combination of all of that is still part of, I guess, I'm using the word understand, you're still trying to understand what the as is, right? You're still trying Yes. to learn what, what what's happening here, because you don't want to make the mistake of thinking the project is going on, so I need to start doing from day one, um, because you can do i'm not saying don't uh you you can if you, if you if you've got things you can think about already then great but the mistake you might make is you might miss some things you might misunderstand what the outcome the intended outcome is you might focus on something that's actually not a high priority or the all you know there's so many reasons why um you don't want to make the mistake of running before you can just figure out okay what's the pace of the team like what's everyone else doing and then what, what's happening right now and As part of that understanding, the second thing I'll add is to build relationships because that's going to be your number one success factor. Like have as many stakeholder engagement relationships and meetings and meet and greets and coffees and whatever as you can, um, even if it's just five minutes with as many people as you can. One-on-ones are my preference, but you can do them as a group if you want to. Um, and just introduce yourself. Say, hey, I'm new and I just thought we'd have a chat and you just let me know. And the powerful thing about that Pippa is that everything I mentioned previously was kind of if you think about it, it's like reading documentation, looking Yes. at maybe requirements that have been gathered. But when you have conversations with people, you will actually really understand the stuff that's not written down. Yes. The things that people are actually thinking about the project, the the way people actually feel about what's happening. And that's that will come from the conversations as opposed to you you, you know, you reading a a a PID or a business case or something Mm. like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's those are really, really great tips. Uh, I find that as well in my experience as business analyst. We have a lot, a lot of documentation to read because we're trying to understand as is what's been done. Um, for instance, you're taking over from a previous BA, you're trying to understand where they stopped, you know, and, and where you can then begin. But it really, really helps to speak to people, speak to stakeholders. Definitely. That's, that's really a good point. So uh, I wanted to go back again to when you mentioned about imposter syndrome. which is something that I, I get asked a lot about from my viewers, from my mentees. Uh, and my response is always, 
there is no cure <laughs> for imposter syndrome, right? Um, for me personally, I always have I always have imposter syndrome, depending on what I'm what the challenge is, what I'm tackling, right? So it's not like I'm so confident in business analysis that I don't have it at all. So what would you say about this to aspiring business analysts who have that fear as well, that Im- imposter syndrome when it comes to uh, tackling projects or beginning as business analysts and not feeling confident that they they actually deserve to be there as business analysts or they can do the work. Yeah, what tips can you share? I'd agree with you. There's no there's no cure, but that's it's not something to cure in the first place. Yes. I'd say <laughs> be, become comfortable with with that. I think that will happen at, in every stage of your career. Because if you think about our, our role as business analysts, like I mentioned f- earlier, nobody's going to hold your hand and nobody's yeah. going to tell you, this is what you do today, this is what you do tomorrow, this is what you do the next day. That doesn't exist in business analysis world. You have to kind of figure these things out yourself. And and secondly, typically speaking, you're also going to be the only business analyst. Most In most cases, you'll be mm. the only business analyst on a project, mm-hmm. or you may be in a project with multiple BAs, but each BA has their own focus, right? It's not yes. like all of you are working on the same thing. And so by virtue of being a, and I'm using this word loosely, but being a lonely BA, <laughs> you're always going to have some sort of imposter syndrome because um, you just, you know, you, you, you're just doing everything by yourself. Yes. And so for, for me, I say get comfortable with it because it's always there. Um, every new job you're going to get, every new project you're going to get, every new team you're going to be involved in, there will always be a case of imposter syndrome. Mm. Um, for me, however, the thing that I've had to or have to remind myself often is that not nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, people aren't trying to catch you out. Yes. They're really trying to collaborate with you. Because the focus is not you. The focus is the problem or the project or the thing that we're trying to solve. So nine times out of ten, they're not they're not trying to like catch you out. Like there's yeah. no there's no BA police out here. But <laughs> what there is is a desire to solve the problem. And for whatever reason, the fact that you are a business analyst, it gives them confidence that we have somebody here to solve our problems and we're so happy mm. to have this person on board. Um, and I would lean on that more uh, because, mm-hmm. you know, you, you, that that's what helps you to then overcome imposter syndrome. To always remember that the people that you're working with are not trying to catch you out, but just trying to solve the problem because we work in teams, right? We're all trying to solve a problem. But again, with that, in my personal experience too, I found myself comparing myself to other members of the team. For instance, at the start of my career, I, I hardly contributed in meetings or spoke up, right? And that's kind of added to that imposter syndrome and lack of confidence because I'm looking at the this other member of the team who speaks so much and has so much to share and I'm just there in the meeting <laughs> quiet right do you have any pointers for newbie business analysts who could experience this as well when in the real life sense yeah I certainly think you you can you can get away with not speaking in the early days but at some point you are certainly yeah. going to step out the shadows I don't think you can hide forever so unfortunately mm-hmm. That's that's something you're just gonna have to accept <laughs> because you are the business analyst, right? Um, I, the only thing I can say to that, I guess, is that when you do see other BAs who are like, um, I guess, out there, should I say? And mm-hmm. you know, there's one or two ways that could happen. The first thing is you can kind of feel like intimidated by that and be yeah. a bit like, do I need to be that way as well? And my answer to that is no, just be yourself. Hmm. Um, I'm not the kind of person who speaks up every time either. And because I like to ensure that if I'm going to speak or say something, it's it's kind of going to provide some value or at least yeah. it's a worthwhile thing to point out as opposed to just speaking for the sake of it. But the second thing that may happen is that you may actually be inspired by that person. You might see somebody who's like, wow, like uh, Pippa's great. Like I'd love hmm. to be more like Pippa like the confidence that Pippa has when she you know she's in the meetings and you might see that as inspirational and again I would say you can be inspired but definitely don't copy because you still need to be 
you know, yourself. You still need to be able to stand on your own two feet and be yourself. So I'd say don't be afraid to be yourself uh, because at the end of the day, it's not worth you changing yourself for that reason. Yes. And if you are inspired, then great, you know, be inspired. Um, if you if you think that make a great coach or mentor to you, then you could approach that and see if that's something that they'd be willing to do. Um, and then maybe you might pick up some of the, the the confidence, but also you might also maybe realize that the reason why they talk so much because they're nervous, right? You just <laughs> never know. You, you just, just never, never know. know. Yeah, exactly. You just never know. Honestly, so you true. never know. So that's and and I've seen that happen. Um, mm. And so for me. That's why I'm like, you just have to learn to be yourself, um, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. But on that point, another point I just thought about is that what's more important as BAs is to listen anyway. That's yeah. more important than talking. Like I had to get to a point where I learned that myself to say, you know what, the requirements are not mine. They're, they're the business. The, the, the problems are not mine. They're the business. Mm -hmm. So my mm -hmm. job is to kind of take in what they're saying and telling me and refine what they're saying and telling me in or in 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 the right format so user stories or whatever mm -hmm. but at the end of the day my job really hinges on how well i listen yes that's a really really great point as business analysts what's very important for us is really to listen and capture all the information that we're using to add value but i'm a bit wary about that as well or uh, i know we're kind of going off the the list of questions that we had <laughs> Um, but I kind of wanted to focus on this one too because we also have to be careful of not becoming note takers in the meeting. Oh, 100%. Right? We're not admin. That part is probably 100% so true. Mm -hmm. And I even, I, there's, there's times where I even refuse to kind of be a secretary for the project. <laughs> I'm just like, no, that's... That's, That's like not your everyone job. Can take my, my answer to that, honestly, is well, let's record the meeting and people can rewatch yeah. if they need notes because I'm not a secretary. So, yeah, 100% don't end up being just a note taker. If you obviously take notes for yourself, mm. great, but not don't don't be a secretary that's not your job yeah, yeah. <laughs> i had to point that out too because uh, i remember a scenario from the start of my career where i started becoming the admin you know in my first role it's very easy easy to do mm -hmm. unfortunately the another thing to expect if you're a new ba um is that unfortunately there will be people in the project team Actually, okay, let me let me start from the top. Mm -hmm. So as a business analyst, you are 100% hired to work in that team to deliver on the project, right? Whereas some of the stakeholders you're working with, they have other day jobs they do. It's just that they're brought onto the project as a yes. subject matter expert, for instance. So if you have that mindset, you will actually then realize that there's only very, very, maybe three or four people that are 100% on the project. Mm. Project manager, business analyst, and maybe someone from a technical perspective, but mm -hmm. usually they're from a, you know, they've got f fires to put out in the, in the, in the BAU world anyway. So mm. like you then find the, the people who are hired to be 100%, like their time and their energy and their effort is on this project then ends up falling to a very, very few people. Everybody else can give half their week to the project and the other half is on other things. Mm -hmm. And so when you then understand that perspective, it's then easy for all this stuff that kind of need to be done to be lead, to be like, oh, the business analyst will do that. Yeah. The business analyst will do that. <laughs> yeah. And you kind of have to be in a position where you're just like, no, that's not my job. If we need a project support admin officer or something like that, then let's get one. Mm -hmm. But that's not my job. My job is, you know, X, Y, Z. Mm. And I'm not saying don't be willing to kind of go outside uh, your 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 roles and responsibilities. Don't be willing to help the team. I'm not saying that. Definitely can bear that in mind. But don't find yourself in a position where you all of a sudden you're now the secretary taking meetings in every, taking notes in every meeting and having to circulate that to all the stakeholders. That's not your job. If, yeah. if that's a real like gap in the team, flag that up and say, listen, we need a we need a project admin officer or something like that to do this work. So, in essence, be assertive if you find yourself in those type of situations. Yeah. Exactly. What other questions? I had a few more, uh, but conscious of time. Looking back, is there anything you wish that you had done uh, when you started out as a business analyst? Um, looking back, I wish that I was certainly more uh, yeah i think i i think i'd say I, I wish i was there's a lot of things that come to my mind Pippa. i'm like which one should i pick which one should i pick 
Oh my yeah. God. Okay. So looking back when I started, the first thing uh, I think we touched on just now about being yeah. more vocal, being more assertive yeah. um, as a business analyst. The second thing I wish uh, looking back that I had done is actually to continuously learn because I realized something happened, people, when I, when, mm-hmm. when, I, when I got my first BA job. I kind of thought, that's it. I don't need to learn anymore. Like, I've got <laughs> the job now. Like, I'm done. I'm in. Mm. But I quickly realized, maybe like a year later, that I'd now learned, like, how the company functions. That, you know, there's, there's kind of a, a pace or a way that the company works. But I hadn't but I felt like I hadn't learned like the foundational business analysis skills because um, I'm just kind of doing the BA role in that company, right? Yeah. And every business analyst job is going to be different based on the company you work at. Yes, so, yes, of course. So for me, it's only now, knowing what I know now, looking back, I'm like, I wish I'd just learned or continued the appetite to learn because um, it's one thing to get a BA job, but it's a whole nother expectation for that organization to utilize you as a business analyst as described by the likes of BCS and IIBA. That's mm. a whole different thing altogether right there. Mm-hmm. And so um, for me, I think I would have, I would, looking back, I'd have been a bit more intentional about, okay, let me just ensure that I'm fully understanding what the role of a business analyst is, not just within this organization, but you know, in general. Because the reason why I say that, people, is because, uh, I don't know, maybe like six, nine months later, I realized that I actually wasn't, my although I did business analysis activities, fifty percent of my time I was doing other things that are right. not really BA related. Like I was doing a little bit of reporting, data mm. analysis. Um, I was doing all the other things, which were great, and I enjoyed them. No, I'm a technical, <laughs> more technical yeah. guy, so I was like, oh, I'm re- I'm really enjoying learning more about like Excel and uh, and, and SQL and whatnot. But I'm mm-hmm. like, this is not quote unquote business analysis. Like I'm mm-hmm. not really doing business analysis work. Oh, as much as I'd like to so yeah that's one thing I'd say looking back I, I wish I would have known starting out mm, that's good that's good to know uh, and would you say that um, as far as business analysts should sort of have this in mind in in going into business analysis isn't it have, have it in mind that business yeah. analyst is a job title business analysis activities is a whole different thing yeah. um you can have the job title of a business analyst and not necessarily do business analysis activities 100 percent of the time mm-hmm. and the and the reverse is equally true you could have a job with a completely random job title yeah but actually when you look at what the job title uh, the roles and responsibilities of that job actually are it's like wow this is full-on business analysis mm. and and that's something to bear in mind uh, in your in your search I could go further into so many more questions, but um, I know you're coming onto the membership space to give us uh, a coaching session, a masterclass. So um, we can cover those those other questions in the session. So if you guys would like to hear more and learn more from Thando, please click the link in description to join the Business Analyst School membership. Um, so my final question before we close is, how do you stay motivated and continue to find fulfillment in uh, your role as a business analyst amidst those challenges and the and the tasks that we we perform? I think for me, the the one thing is keeping the end in mind. Um, I think it's easy to get lost in in the work, uh, and by that I mean it's easy to get lost in like making sure your process models are all neat and tidy yes <laughs> the requirements are like well written and you know in the best format they could ever be but actually that's that's the outputs that we deliver but focus more on the outcomes so there's a slight mm-hmm. difference there outputs is kind of like the actual tangible things you deliver whether that is a requirements document of sorts or user stories or whatever whereas the outcomes of that is actually the fact that the, uh, for instance, we're improving a process for X team to save their time. And when you focus on the outcome and you're working closely with the teams and they're saying to you, yes, oh my goodness, this solution that you guys are proposing will like save so much headache in our team. For me, that's what I focus on. I focus on the thing that we're delivering. What is it that is actually going to then lead to? Um, and the one, I guess another way to think about it is what are the benefits of us delivering this? this yeah. piece of work and this requirement and just be mindful of that i think that's really key to 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 bear in mind because 
what it does is then it, it still allows you to to see the full picture of the thing that you're trying to deliver but then at the end of that really understand the impact that you're having as a business analyst you know mm-hmm. to say the part of the reason why I'm understanding the as is part of the reason why I've been working with the stakeholders to understand their processes and looking at new to be processes and building the requirements and whatever whatever at the end of it is that I am solving a real world problem mm. right and I'm solving a real problem for a team or a group of customers or a client or the whole organization um but I can and I can point to that problem and say this is the thing that I'm solving and I think that's what keeps me going that's great that's really great and and I hope viewers you learn from that as well try not to get lost in how neat and tidy things look which is something that I I tend to do especially with process maps it's like oh needs to what's the color the color scheme how should it look that is good representation of those um, visual that we present to stakeholders is great but don't get lost in that and focus on the full picture, the problem we're trying to solve and the value that we're trying to add on the project as well as to the organization. Yeah, so we've come to a close today. Thank you so much again, Thando, for joining us today. And um, like I mentioned, I'll link everything, all Thando's details and the Inside Business Analysis podcast link in the description box uh yeah so is there anything you'd like to share before we close any final tips closing tips yeah no thank you people first of all thank you for having me on i really appreciate it i've enjoyed our conversations same the here the thing i'd like to share is that if 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 you are in that position of like an aspiring business analyst or you're brand new or you're still i guess fairly new into the world into the space of business analysis maybe been a ba for under a year for example um, the final thing I'll simply share is continuously learn, continuously improve and continuously grow. Um, there is, you, you may think you know everything, but there is a difference between, you know, doing a process map in, say, a financial services company and then mm. applying the same thing in healthcare. You will yeah. realize that, my goodness, there is so many <laughs> other things that you're just unaware of on so many different tools and techniques that you're just not uh up on or maybe you know them on the textbook level but you don't really know how to apply them in the real world level so mm. the world of business analysis is ever changing it's ever growing um you know we've got a lot of things that are happening in this space with ai coming in um with a lot of more roles that are looking at business analysis activities and the one way you can stay ahead of the curve is to continuously learn continuously grow continuously improve yourself and continuously invest in yourself and don't mm. stop because you got a job because yes. you finally <laughs> landed the job even after you got the job you still need to continuously improve yourself so keep going thank you so much great great tips and pointers there i hope you've all enjoyed today's session with thando and as always please don't forget to like subscribe and share this you never know who it might help until i see you in the next one peace